Now that we've been working with Laplace transforms from a, for a while, we're finally ready to answer the question that we've been building towards how do we solve differential equations with Laplace transforms. And the only piece we need to add to what we've seen so far to be able to do this is to look at the Laplace of the derivative. In other words, we're going to find the Laplace transform of f prime of t. Well, using the definition of a Laplace transform, that's the integral from 0 to infinity, of e to the negative st f prime of t dt. And we can evaluate this by integration by parts, where u is equal to e to the negative st, and dv is equal to the f prime of t dt. Therefore, du is going to be negative s e to the negative st dt. And v, the antiderivative of f prime, is just f which means we've got u times v, which is e to the, whoops, u times v is e to the negative st times f of t minus the integral of v du. v is the f of t, and du is a negative s, which I can pull out, e to the negative st dt. And we're still integrating from 0 to infinity, and the left side should also be integrated from 0 to infinity. And what's nice about this is when we plug the infinity in, just looking at the left side, we end up with e to the negative infinity, which is 0, minus when we plug 0 in, we get e to the 0, which is 1, times f of 0, because that's what we're plugging in, plus s times, and what you notice is this integral is the definition of the Laplace transform of our function f of t, no longer as a derivative. And so if that's the case, what we can say is if the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to a capital F of S, then we have the following properties. The Laplace transform of F prime of T is going to be equal to what we just derived, but I'm going to switch the order of the terms, S times F of S, where F represents the Laplace transform, minus lowercase f of 0. And then using the same logic, the Laplace transform of f double prime of t just requires integration by parts twice, but you end up with s squared times capital F of s, representing the Laplace transform, minus s times f of 0 minus f prime of 0. And then we can keep going, and you can start to see a pattern start to form as we do the third derivative of t is equal to, you notice the exponent on s starts with the derivative times the Laplace transform minus, and then the exponent starts to count down as we do f of 0 minus s f prime of 0 minus f double prime of 0. And so we can generalize this problem that the Laplace transform of the nth derivative is equal to s to the n times the Laplace transform minus s to the n minus 1 times f of 0 minus s to the n minus 2 times f prime of 0 minus so on and so forth until we finally hit s f to the n minus 2 derivative of 0 
minus f to the n minus 1 derivative of 0. These formulas should be on your Laplace transform worksheet, but they would be very helpful to memorize, especially the first derivative and second derivative, because those are the ones that we're going to be using the most. So with these properties in mind, let's look at solving differential equations by taking the Laplace transform of both sides. Let's say we've got the function x prime prime minus x prime minus 6x equals 0. And we're going to have some initial conditions that x of 0 is equal to 2 and x prime of 0 is equal to negative 1. Well, to solve this, we can take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. When we do, we'll start with the Laplace transform of x prime prime minus the Laplace transform of x prime minus 6 times the Laplace transform of our function x equals the Laplace transform of 0. Well, we know the Laplace transform of the second derivative is s squared times, we're going to do a capital X, meaning the transform of lowercase x, minus s times x of 0 minus x prime of 0, minus the Laplace transform of x prime. And be careful here, I'm going to have to distribute the negative through the Laplace transform. So we have minus s times x transformed. And now it's going to become a plus x of 0 minus 6 times the Laplace transform of x is just a capital X equals the Laplace transform of 0 is just 0. And we never really derived that one, but you can see pretty quick from the definition that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times our function 0 dt is equal to 0. So that's a pretty trivial case. So what we're ultimately going to try and do now that we've transformed this differential equation from calculus to an algebra problem, now we're going to solve for that x, or for that capital X Laplace transform. But before we do, let's do a little bit of simplifying with the x of 0 and x prime of 0 that we've got in there, because we are given those values, so it's going to make it easier to work with. So we have s squared x, capital S, minus s times x of 0, which is 2 s, minus x prime of 0, which is a negative 1, minus s times capital X, plus x of 0 is 2, minus 6 times capital X. And now again, we're solving for these x's. So I'm going to factor the x out of those terms, leaving behind s squared minus s minus 6. And then the other terms, I'm going to pop over to the other side. So we'll have 2s minus 3. And then when we divide, we find out x, our Laplace transform, is equal to 2s minus 3 divided by s squared minus s minus 6. We can factor that denominator to s minus 3 times s plus 2. And now we're in a situation where we can transfer back to the calculus world to figure out what x is by using the inverse Laplace transform on this fraction. Well, this is exactly what we looked at doing in our previous video. Now we're going to use partial fractions, where we have a over s minus 3 plus b over s plus 2. and we can solve to split up into two fractions 
and then find that quick inverse Laplace transform. So when multiplying by the LCD, we have 2s minus 3 equals a times s plus 2 plus b times s minus 3. If I let s equal negative 2, we'll have negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7 equals negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5b, and the a term goes to 0, so b is equal to 7 fifths. And we can let s equal 3, that makes the second term go to 0. 6 minus 3 is 3 equals a times 3 plus 2 is 5a. So a is equal to 3 fifths. And then we can say our x is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of a 3 fifths times 1 over s minus 3 plus b 7 fifths times 1 over s plus 2. And we've seen this Laplace transform lots of times. We can pull the 3 fifths out. The Laplace transform, inverse transform of 1 over s minus 3 is e to the 3t plus 7 fifths times e to the negative 2t. And now we have actually solved our differential equation. What I want to notice is if we had solved this using our methods from chapter 2, we would have said this has a characteristic equation of d squared minus d minus 6 equals 0, d minus 3 d plus 2 is how that factors, and so d would equal 3 and negative 2. And so we would say x equals c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the negative 2t. And then we would have to go back using our initial conditions to solve for what c1 and c2 are. What's really amazing about the Laplace transform method is it actually solved for those constants c1 and c2 as we worked through the problem. We don't have to go back and solve for those constants. Let's take a look at one example that's a non-homogeneous example before we wrap up. Let's solve the equation x double prime plus 4x equals the sine of 3t. So non-homogeneous. Again, we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides to create this capital X, solve for the capital X, and then go back to the calculus world with the inverse Laplace transform. Of course, to do this, I need some initial conditions. So let's uh, do x of 0 equals 0, and x prime of 0 equals 0 as well. All right. So when we take the Laplace transform, we end up with, I'm going to skip the middle step and go right to taking the Laplace transform term by term. The Laplace transform of x double prime is s squared, capital X, minus s times x of 0, minus x prime of 0, plus 4 times the Laplace transform of x is just x equals the Laplace transform of the sine of 3t. Well, if I look at my Laplace transform table, I can see that's going to be 3 over s squared plus 9. Now I can go back in and plug in my x of 0 and x prime of 0. Those are both 0, which is really nice, leaving behind s squared times x plus 4 times x equals 3 over s squared plus 9. Factor out the x, leaves behind s squared plus 4 equals 3 over s squared plus 9. Divide, and we find out our capital X is equal to 3 over s squared plus 9 times s squared plus 4. 
In order to take the inverse Laplace transform to solve for the x that we actually want, we'll split this up into two fractions. Because this is an irreducible quadratic of s squared plus 9, we have to have as plus b in the numerator, plus cs plus d over s squared plus 4. I'm going to work over on the left here as we solve those partial fractions. Multiplying to clear out the denominator, we get 3 is equal to as plus b times the s squared plus 4 plus cs plus d times the s squared plus 9. With this one, similar to an example we saw in the prior video, we can't clear out any of the factors. Let's multiply everything out and then see what we end up with, setting common coefficients together. So we have 3 equals as cubed plus bs squared plus 4as plus 4b plus cs cubed plus ds squared plus 9cs plus 9d. And if we put the cubes together, we have 0 s cubes on the left and a plus c on the right. Put the squares together. We have 0 squares on the left and b plus d s squares on the right. Looking at the constants, we've got 4 as and 9 cs, but there's none on the left side, so we have 0 equals 4a plus 9c. And finally, with our constants, we have 3 on the left is equal to 4b plus 9d, which is really nice on the left side. Those of you that have taken linear algebra can recognize that as a null space. That only works if a and c are equal to 0. On the right side, we're going to do a little bit of algebra, but it's not too bad. I'm going to multiply by negative 4 to get 0 equals negative 4b minus 4d. Leaves behind 3 equals 5d, and so d is equal to 3 fifths. And if we've got the equation 0 equals b plus d, we can infer then that b is the opposite, negative 3 fifths. So, putting this all together, that tells us x is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of uh, a and c are both 0, so that's going to be nice. We've got just b left, which is a negative 3 fifths times 1 over s squared plus 9. Plus, c is also 0, leaving behind just a 3 fifths times 1 over s squared plus 4. Looking back at our table of Laplace transforms, you'll recognize the denominator of s squared plus 9 and s squared plus 4 are both coming from a sine function, but the numerator needs to be the square root of what's added. The 9 is really 3 squared and the 4 is really 2 squared. So we need to have a 3 and a 2 in the numerators. So we'll multiply by 3 and divide by 3, which is nice because those reduce out. On the other side, we'll multiply by 2 and divide by 2, and then we get that x is equal to negative 1 fifth times the sine of 3t plus 3 over 10 times the sine of 2t. And again, notice that the Laplace transform was able to tell us our complementary solution, which you can tell by just looking at it would have been the sine of 2t, and the particular solution, which you can see would be the sine of 3t with some coefficient added together. But what's nice about the Laplace transform is we didn't have to do all the work to find the coefficients given the initial conditions. 
The Laplace transform also is more powerful because we can do Laplace transforms with things that we could not do when we were solving linear equations. And so that's going to add to the flexibility of the Laplace transform. It's much more powerful than our old method we were using for second ordered uh, differential equations that could only handle constant coefficients that were linear in form. All right, so it's your turn to practice actually solving some of these uh, Laplace transform differential equations. Some of them we can solve by other methods. It's a good way to check your work, but we're really focusing today on using that Laplace transform of both sides. So take a look at the homework. Let me know what questions you have.